What's up everyone back for another beer review and today I'll be reviewing a beer from Heavy Seas Beer and they are out of Baltimore, Maryland and this is their 24th anniversary ale. So they're calling this one a quadruple IPA that comes in at 14% alcohol by volume, 65 IBUs at the time of review. I don't know exactly how old this can is but I think it's relatively fresh and that's because this can was sent to me by a couple of good friends of mine and a fellow beer tubers, Todd and Andy over at 21090 Brewing. So thank you very much, guys. I'll post a link in the description box to not only the beer mail unboxing video I did that contains all the goodies they sent my way, but also their channel. If you haven't checked out their channel, fantastic. Uh, number one, they're good dudes. Number two, they have great, great content. Uh, they're funny. Uh, their production value is through the roof and just overall fantastic channel. So I cannot... I cannot recommend their channel enough. Uh, they are just great dudes um, and they, they put in the work and you know what, uh, they are rewarded. They have tons of subscribers and they uh, deserve every single one of them. So thanks again to them for hooking me up with this one. I saw them review this one and uh, they both really enjoyed it. I know Todd was kind of worried it would be like American barley wine because let's be honest, quadruple IPAs, they don't really exist. Neither do triple IPAs, but once you hit like 10%, most places start saying triple IP. And once you hit, I feel like 12 plus percent, usually 13, 14. Uh, I've seen a couple places do quadruple IPAs. I've had a couple of them, and uh, they've been good, the couple of quad IPAs I've had. So this one sounds quite interesting. Now, they're hopping this one to the tune of four pounds of hops per barrel, and they're using, I believe it's Citra, Galaxy, Enigma, and Simcoe. And uh, yeah, I uh, can't wait to get into this one. Both of those guys really dug this beer, and I'm hoping I do as well. Um, always nervous drinking a 14% so-called IPA because not many are out there, right? Like you think about like 120 minute from Dogfish Head and how that just morphs into way just completely different styles, American Strong Ale, you know, American Barley Wine. As it ages, it kind of smooths out and does different things. The alcohol dies down. This is gonna be interesting having this relatively fresh at 14%. Using the Dogfish Head glass because I barely use it on my channel. Uh, this is like one of the first craft beer glasses I ever bought. And I've only used it a couple times. So anyway, yeah. So this looks like an old school like double IPA, right? But it's not even a double, it's not a triple, it's a quad. It has this really nice burnt orange color. Uh, this has the etching in the bottom, so you can see the carbonation. I don't know if you're going to see it on camera, but it's there's a lot of carbonation coming up. has about a finger of this light tan colored head. Uh, you know, has a little bit of haze to it, but for the most part, um, pretty filtered. But yeah, I mean, this looks like an old school IPA, honestly. All right, nose time. <laughs> So the first thing I know is there's a lot of sweetness on the nose. It, I'm not getting a lot of booze in this, but there's definitely a lot of sweetness. Caramel. Yeah, like a breadiness, caramel. There's a little touch of like a honey kind of sweetness to it as well. Now to me, and I know Todd said he was worried it was going to be an American barley wine. I kind of drank, drank like, you know, hot for it. To me, I'm getting a little bit of <laughs> American barley wine kind of nose it on this one. It's caramel. It's bready. It has like this resinous pine quality, but then I'm getting nice like layered tropical fruits like a uh, mango, like a, a sweeter mango, a uh, little bit of like a, a sweeter pineapple too. Not necessarily like a crushed pineapple, but just like a sweeter, like straight ripened pineapple. A little bit of citrus zest, I would say, like orange and tangerine underlying. Oh, man, here's the thing though. Like I don't smell, I don't smell 14%. This smells like a bigger beer. I would guess this is a double IPA, maybe a triple IPA. I would maybe guess nine to 10%. It doesn't smell like it's 14. But it does have like an American barley wine, American strong ale like kind of quality to it. But it smells really good. I am not gonna sit here and lie. It smells good. I wanna drink this one. My mouth is actually watering. So cheers and thanks again to uh, Todd and Andy and to 1090 Brewing. Appreciate it guys. Oh, <laughs> this is kind of the beer that my palate's been looking for for a little while. I don't know where you're going to see this one, but I just got done um, reviewing the Hot Butcher beers that Hot Butcher sent me. And the one thing I really liked about those beers was the fact to me, anyway, to my palate, it was a nice marriage of like New England style IPA and West Coast style IPA. I kept on saying mild to moderate bitterness and none of the beers approached really over a, a moderate bitterness. It was like a couple of them right around a moderate bitterness. I was like, I wish I could say that, you know, a beer has a moderate to high bitterness. That's this beer. <laughs> That's this beer right now. And I'm glad that I'm drinking one that I haven't had a moderate to high bitterness in a long time. First things first, this does an incredible job of hiding the alcohol. 
Do Is it somewhat boozy? Yes, it's 14%. I don't think you can drink a 14% quadruple IPA and not taste a little bit of alcohol stringency because I get a little bit, but it's nowhere near 14%. It's more like 10, maybe 11, but it hides it extremely well considering it is 15, or 14%. It's, it's awesome from that aspect. The taste though kind of follows the nose to me, for me anyway. Right at the forefront, I'm getting the um, caramel, a little bit of like a touch of honey, maybe like a honey malt type of thing. A big breadiness, a big malt sweetness at the front of the palate. As it continues on though, those fruits I was talking about, like the, the sweeter mango, the sweeter pineapple, the citrus zest, that kind of hits like right before mid palate. And then mid palate, the like resinous pine, resinous hop quality hits. There's a pretty substantial dryness and then the bitterness begins. And as it carries on through the back of the palate, those sweeter malt and fruit flavors from the hops kind of dissipate and it turns into a drier, more bitter beer. This is moderate to high bitter. I wouldn't say this, the bitterness is a pro, like right at like a super high bitterness. It's more over moderate, so like right between moderate and high, but it has a pretty big bitterness on the back end for me and a nice like palate gripping dryness. So it's super sweet up front, but by the end of the drink, it dries out and the bitterness hits. So it's, it's quite, it's, it's well balanced. And I didn't think I'd say that, but it's well balanced. The body on this one's a little bit thin for me, just to be honest with you. This is like higher side of medium body. It's 14%. That's a little bit disappointing, but I will say, and I've said this in all my triple IP reviews, when I have a 10% or higher hop four beer, I want it to drink like an 8% double IP. I want it to be like medium, higher side of medium. And that's what this is. So I'm okay with the body, despite the fact that it is quite thin at 14%, but I'm okay with it. It doesn't have a thick syrupy feel to it. And I think if it did, then I would start placing it more in an American barley wine, American strong ale kind of category. This kind of does drink like a quad IPA if they existed. They technically do, but do they really? Um, the mouthfeel, kind of old school, you know, IPA mouthfeel. Crisp, effervescent, has a nice smoothness to it but it's you know mostly spritzy on the palate you know what for a quad ipa this is pretty damn nice um I, I really do dig it i like the fact that it does have a substantial bitterness i like the fact that it is balanced on the palate and despite the body being a little bit thin and the mouthfeel being older school i think they really did a really good job with this one um i'm not gonna like it as much as todd and andy i think they both gave it Four seven fives out of five, maybe four or five. I think it was four seven fives. I, I'm not going to go to that level. Um, I don't like it that much, but I do like Heavy Seas, their uh, 24th anniversary L, their quadruple IPA. I like it to the tune of, um, yeah, I think I think it's a 4.25 out of five for me all day. I think it's a good beer. Uh, I'm really enjoying this one. I'm going to take my time with it though. Um, I am getting substantial, substantial warming into the chest and the stomach, but it's 14%. I, I, I get that. I'm just happy on the pellet that it doesn't have the astringency from the alcohol that you'd expect from an almost, you know, mid-teens, basically a mid-teens beer. Like I thought it would be really, really crazy on the pellet, and it's not. So I think it does a good job of balancing out the malts, the hops, you know, the, the sweetness, the bitterness. Really well-balanced beer at 14%, which is crazy to say because that's usually not the case. And yeah, it's a really good beer. If you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it. Price and availability, I don't know. Now, a good friend of mine, a viewer of the channel, Jeff A.K. No Jinx, said he picked this one up locally. We do get Heavy Seas beers here in Buffalo, but I don't remember seeing this one. We don't get a lot. I've not really seen many of their canned beers. It's usually still in their bottles. Uh, so I don't think we got this one, or at least I didn't see it. Uh, but their availability is pretty good. Wherever you see, wherever you see Heavy Seas beers, you usually see uh, some of their limited releases. But I, I don't, I did not see this one. So definitely made it in a distro because Jeff lives in Michigan. So definitely went out to places. We just didn't see it here. Um, and then the part, price point on this one, I have no idea. So if Todd or Andy or anybody else wants to chime in on the price point, I would imagine four to five bucks a can. I'm probably thinking twenty dollars a four pack for a big quad IPA like this. Even if it's a little bit more, like six bucks a can, um, I'd be okay with it. You're talking about a fourteen percent uh, quadruple IPA, four pounds of uh, hops per barrel, uh, using some really good hops too. So you know, I would anywhere from four to six dollars a can, I'd be fine with it. Now, if it's over six dollars a can, probably not. But I, I don't think it's that much. Uh, but again. 
chime in if you guys want to and uh, let me know. I would really appreciate it. And I appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review. Thanks once again to Todd and Andy for hooking me up with this one. Go check out the channel. Like I said, 21090 Brewing. They do a great job over there. I'm going to hit them back with a box at some point in the near future of some New York State Brewery so they can continue on with their state series. They say they, I think they said they had like three or four uh, videos still um, in the queue, so to speak. Uh, so make that a, a fourth or a fifth one when I send them my uh, beer mail. So Thanks to everybody. Appreciate everybody stopping by. To the next one. Cheers.